For the following exercises, solve the equations below and express the answer using set notation. Okay, so we've done tons of problems like this already, so if you are new to absolute values, I would highly recommend looking at those before you jump to here because these are going to be more, uh, not advanced, but they're just, they just have more steps. All right, so if you're just brand new to absolute values, go check out uh, the first couple of videos on the playlist, okay? But now let's get into it. So the first one, we want two times the absolute value of x minus three plus one equals two. Okay, so remember the idea, the object of the game is to always get x by itself. Now x is being surrounded by these brackets or these straight lines. That's the absolute value. We have to deal with that last. So we need to get rid of all the numbers outside of the absolute value. There are two of them here. There's a two in the front and there's a plus one or a positive one at the end. So I have to throw both of these numbers to the other side first before I can even deal with the X, which is trapped inside of that absolute value. But the question is, uh, what am I going to do first, right? What are we going to do first? Are we going to divide the whole thing by two to cancel out the two? Or are we going to, instead of plus one, are we going to subtract one from both sides? What do you guys think? The answer is we're going to subtract one to both sides to cancel it out. The reason is that um, if you divide the whole thing by two, you are saying essentially that this one was also being times by two. You see how I extended this whole line to the one? But is the two multiplied by this one? No, it's not. It's, it's just two times the absolute value. And then you, the equation moves on with a plus one. So things that are multiplied with functions are married. They have a stronger bond. Get rid of the other stuff first if you're moving it over to the other side. So we are going to minus one or subtract one, and that will cancel out first. Two times the absolute value of x minus three equals two minus one is just one. Still, I want to get x by itself. However, it's still being trapped inside of this absolute value function, but there's still a two outside, which I can throw over to the other side. And now we can do the division because the two is being multiplied by the whole thing on the left side. So I can divide by two on both sides and that gets rid of the two. So now I have the absolute value of X minus three equals one half. Oh boy. Now, how, how the heck am I gonna get this X out of this absolute value? Right, I, I can't do anything because both the X and the three are trapped inside of the absolute value. So how do we progress further? If, you, if you're at a, a stopping point where everything is in the absolute value, just know that what the absolute value really means is that it's outputting or equaling all positive answers. That's what the absolute value does. It takes a positive answer and a negative answer and turns it into a positive value. <laughs> so that's why you'll always see absolute values always equal a positive number because that's, that's what they do. Um, so for here, we break it up into two equations. That's how you get rid of that absolute value. So when you're at a stopping point, you say, okay, now I can separate them out. I can say that X minus three did equal a one half, but technically if this was equal to a negative one half, the absolute value is going to give you the positive answer. So I could have said X minus three equals negative one half. And once you split it up into two, you get rid of the absolute value. And now you can solve for X. So let's work with the, the 
equation on the left. I still want to get rid of x. It's being minus, you know, minus 3. So you got to do the inverse, plus 3, plus 3 on both sides. I'm going to keep it as a fraction, just to get you guys more familiar with fractions. Um, but you could easily just plug this into your calculator and do the decimal answer. That's fine. Um, so I, I believe this would be 7 over 2 if we actually kept it in fraction form, but I'm just going to put in 1 divided by 2 plus 3 into the calculator. You get 3.5. You can keep that if, if your professor doesn't mind, uh, but that is 7 over 2, so I'm just going to highlight that. Okay. And now we do the next one. So I still want to get x by itself, plus 3, plus 3, x would equal a negative 1 over 2 plus 3. So I believe that's a 5 over 2. But always go to Calci and see what Calci says. Um, it is 5 over 2. OK. So I got my two answers. I have 7 over 2 and I have 5 over 2. However, we need to put it into something called set notation. What is that? Well. It's notation using these beautiful squiggles <laughs> and in which you put your answer in uh, inside the squiggles. But set notation always says that you have to go from the lower numbers all the way to the higher numbers. So I have to analyze which of these two um, are my uh, lower number and my higher number. But with fractions, it's easy, especially if they have the same denominator, the same number on the bottom. These numbers both have something over 2. So I just look to the top number. This one was a 7, and this is a 5. The higher number is going to be the larger number. So the 5 over 2 is smaller, because a 5 is smaller than 7. So I have to start with the 5 over 2, and then I say a comma, 7 over 2. Set notation, you separate the two answers by just putting a comma there. And that's the answer. Beautiful. Let's keep going. This guy. Okay, let's see. We have the absolute value of 3x minus 2 equals 7. The object of the game is we want to solve for x. However, I see here that everything, 3x minus 2, it's all being trapped inside of that absolute value. Can I progress further? Mm, I mean, it, I, I can't do anything with this 2 because it's inside the absolute value. So if I think I can't progress any further, what am I going to do? I split it up. So here we could automatically go right into splitting it up. It says it's going to equal 7, so that's definitely one equation. But remember, it's always going to give you the positive answer. It could have been, though, a negative 7. So 3x minus 2 equals a negative 7. And there are your two answers. So let's solve. Let's work with the one on the left first. We want to get x by itself. So algebra rules. I'm going to plus 2, plus 2. 3x, and this cancels. So 3x... And by the way, just so that you guys can see, these cancel as well. Um, 3x equals 7, 8, 9. We want to get x by itself, so we're going to divide by 3. So x equals 3. And that's your first answer. Woohoo! Now we just got to do the next one. We want to get x by itself. So minus 2 is what is being said. So we do the opposite. So plus 2, plus 2. 3x equals negative 7 plus 2 is a negative 5. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. We've got x equals negative 5 over 3 as our second answer. Cool beans. But now we just got to put it into set notation. Which one is smaller? This one is a positive 3, and this one is a negative 5 over 3. A negative is always going to be less than a positive. So... Squiggles. Negative 5 over 3, that's the lower number, comma, 3. And there is your answer. 
Not bad. Last one. Let's do it. Oh, it looks like the same. Negative, uh, sorry, uh, the absolute value of 3x minus 2, so it's the same thing as this, but it equals a negative 7. Wait a minute. Hmm. Is this possible? The absolute value equals a negative 7. What's the definition of an absolute value, guys? Absolute values are always going to produce a positive answer. Especially if you can't, I mean, if you can't progress any further and you have to split it up, that answer must be positive because the secret answer is always the negative. But if they're saying that the absolute value, and I have nothing else, right? I don't have a times by two. I don't have a plus, uh, you know, a plus two, right? I have no other numbers. I just have the absolute value, right? And, and I'm at the stage where I'm going to separate, I can't have it equal to negative 7. It has to be equal to a positive 7. That's what the absolute value is all about. So does this exist? No. They tried to get you. So I can't even break it down. This does not exist. This idea that the absolute value is going to give you a negative value. That does not happen in life. It always equals a positive. So in this case... Is there a solution? No, there's no solution. I can't progress any further. They tried to trick us, but they're not going to trick us. Come on, we're better than that, right? So I'm just going to stop right there. I can't progress any further because this doesn't make any sense. So that's it. No solution for this one. Okay. What do you guys think? I this is, this is fun. I, I really enjoy math. So um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If this helped you or not, um, just let us know. I, I love talking to you guys. If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can. That would help us out tremendously. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys have been awesome. And I, and I love hearing from you guys. Um, but yeah, so keep studying hard. You got this. Math is fun. And hopefully by doing the problems together, you guys have some fun too. All right. So I, I hope you guys have a great day. Keep studying hard and I'll see you guys all in the next question. Okay. Bye-bye.